I still remember March 2020. We have a pandemic and all lectures will be online. You have two weeks to prepare. I had never done anything like it. I had participated in video telephone conferences, but organized them? I had used a camera for taking photos during my holidays, but making movies? Then came Yvonne Zimmermann Fabricius. She knows everyone and everything in our university and always has excellent ideas. She said, we have a video lab here, let me show you. And then we went to this lab, a tiny room crammed with projectors, cameras and a green screen. There was a recording going on and I instantly thought, this is exactly what I want to have for my online lectures. And Felix Spies, one of the experts of the video lab, started explaining things to me. Willkommen beim Kompass Digitale Lehre. He told me how the whole green screen setup works, that I need some lighting, a video switcher and so on and so forth. What then followed can only be described as a steep learning curve. I work 10 hours a day, 7 days a week, set up OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, learned how to use Zoom for the lectures, installed the first version of my own video studio. And then, after two weeks, started the summer term online and without delay. My vision was to stand in front of the slides and talk to students like in an ordinary lecture. Then came my colleague Andrea Schröder, who is leading a center for innovation in teaching in our university. She had this idea with the gooseneck. You can use the gooseneck to hold your smartphone above your hands and stream live while your hands scribble on a piece of paper. I used this to replace the whiteboard in the classroom. She also introduced the Lavalier microphone to me as a simple way of recording the voice in an acceptable quality. I had never heard of this or the Duchesse de Lavalier before to whom the name refers. Sound quality is more important than image quality. I received substantial help here from David Marker from our video lab. He gave me some hints on acoustic damping and produced a sound profile for my studio and my microphone. Much later, Andrea provided us with a PTZ camera and some fancy wireless microphones. But let's go back in time and talk about another topic, which is the beginning of this YouTube channel. I thought that doing live video lectures and recording videos would require a similar set of skills. There was the idea of putting tutorial videos for the students and also a wider audience on a YouTube channel. Nehmen wir jetzt mal die Zielgruppe YouTube äh, Generation. Was, worauf kommt's da an? Warum, warum klicken Menschen auf diese Videos? It was again Felix who introduced me to the secrets of YouTube thumbnails and helped me with the design of a channel logo. And this is how this channel started. In the early phase, I was in constant exchange with Felix. There were so many topics, composition, camera perspective, shot size, white balance. But perhaps the most important hint from Felix was to use DaVinci Resolve for video editing. This is not a software, this is a whole universe. You can spend years learning it. I started with entry-level tutorials by Casey Ferris and watched more color grading specific videos from Alex Jordan. The green screen topic kept coming back and I used the 3D keyer in the beginning. Later I discovered fusion in the very thorough videos from Bernd Klim. And I think you know which effect is coming now. Yes, this one. And I am now using Fusion and the Delta Keyer for chroma keying. And then, apart from technology, there is the domain of creative ideas for videos. Maria Christina Nimmerfroh is a colleague who 
who has a fascinating series of videos on psychology. What influenced me is the fact that she records these videos always in different locations, many times outside. You have the impression of watching and listening to a live reporter on TV. Another inspiring source for more complex ideas came from Jason Yadlovsky, especially the split-screen effect. I've used that more than once. When Jason explains it, it's very easy to do. Last but not least, I have to mention Stephen Washer. I started watching his videos for improving my green screen setup. In the beginning, my keying was far from perfect. There was an awful lot of sizzling in the hair going on, as you can see. Stephen has a lot of valuable tips of how to set up a green screen studio in a tiny space. When I recorded my first online interview, I stole the layout from one of Stephen's interviews. Technology, however, is only one aspect of Stephen's channel. There's also the aspect of how to connect to your audience. The content is often of an almost philosophical nature. I thank everyone who helped me and taught me. Being thrown into the cold water at the beginning was a challenge, but I rarely learned so much so quickly, and I have to admit it was a lot of fun. I wish that my students and the viewers of this channel get a similar motivation for business process automation and have fun learning and find some of the stuff that I put out here helpful.